and they talk about, oh, the enthusiasm. Let me tell you, we have the enthusiasm. See the crowds, and we'll be right back. You might have seen a, a few people showed up in Philadelphia the other night. And then 10,000 plus walked into a field in western Wisconsin. But Arizona just couldn't leave it alone, could you? <laughs> it's not as if anybody cares about crowd sizes or anything. So. <laughs> I mean, as a progressive, I already loved the Tim Walls pick, but having him there to get under Trump's skin like this is a bonus. As you've likely seen, the Harris Walls ticket can pack a venue. In key battleground states at that. Are you ready to do your part? Are you ready to form a more perfect union? Are you ready to build an America where no matter what you look like, where you come from, who you love or who you pray to, that this will be a place for you? And are you ready to look the next president of the United States in the eye and say, hello, Madam President? And unlike those crowds often seen across the aisle, they're packed with energy, enthusiasm, that thing called joy. why we are going to win is because we remember and we are smart and we know what's happening and we're not falling for the gaslighting and we're not falling for the okie doke but I guess who can expect to feel such things when the warm-up act at those other rallies makes it Diet Mountain Dew is hilarious? It is the weirdest thing to me. Democrats say that it is racist to believe. Well, they say it's racist to do anything. I had a Diet Mountain Dew yesterday and one today. I'm sure they're going to call that racist too, but it's good. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> okay. And the main attraction dedicates hours at a time discussing the late great Hannibal Lecter, and it appears the ever growing crowds at Kamala Harris's campaign events are really starting to irk the former president to the point that he's hosting full blown emergency press conferences to address them while attacking the very press he invited to his home to watch him lie for an hour straight. Listen, I had 107,000 people in New Jersey. You didn't report it. I'm so glad you asked. What did she have yesterday, 2,000 people? If I ever had 2,000 people, you'd say my campaign is finished. It's so dishonest, the press, and, and here's a great example. I had, in Michigan recently, 25,000 people, and 25,000 people were just, we just couldn't get them in. We had in Harrisburg, 20, 25,000 people, and 20,000 people couldn't get in. We had so many, nobody ever mentions that. When she gets 1,500 people, and I saw it yesterday on ABC, which they said, oh, the crowd was so big. I have 10 times, 20 times, 30 times the crowd size. And no, they never say the crowd was big. That's why I'm always saying, turn around the cameras. I'm so glad you asked that. I think it's so terrible when you say, well, she has 1,500 people, 1,000 people, and they talk about, oh, the enthusiasm. Let me tell you, we have the enthusiasm. To fact check there, so we're just going to run through uh, things here. He includes the crowd size, which he told a lie about of Kamala Harris. Which clearly is getting at him because he stayed on crowd size for a long time. Jeff Zeleny is back here with us. You were at uh, the rally yesterday in Detroit. Uh, you've been to many Trump rallies. This is something that is bothering him. And, he and you know, comments like this from vice presidential candidate Tim Walls puts every ketchup bottle in jeopardy at Mar-a-Lago. You know that Trump hates it. Hey! Yeah! Wow. Well, you might have seen a, a few people showed up in Philadelphia the other night. 
And then 10,000 plus walked into a field in western Wisconsin. And then on Wednesday, the largest crowd of the campaign showed up in Detroit, Michigan. But Arizona just couldn't leave it alone, could you? <laughs> It's not as if anybody cares about crowd sizes or anything. So. <laughs> wow. Especially when journalists are documenting how this is the biggest democratic crowd they've seen in Arizona in over 25 years. But what is important to note, right, outside of crowd size, is how the crowd are feeling. Topics that are being discussed, the hope and future policy positions that are outlined, not just hours of hate spewing and fear mongering. Uh, I, I am the very proud mayor of Mesa, Arizona, but I... Thank you. Thank you. But I, I have to say, I feel maybe a little out of place today. Uh, partly, partly because we're in beautiful Glendale. Okay, there's that. But as you may know, I'm a lifelong Republican. All right? Now, I have to thank, thank you for your warm response. I have to tell you that I, can, I do not recognize my party. It has been... The Republican Party has been taken over by extremists that are committed to forcing people in the center of the political spectrum out of the party. So I, I have something to say to those of us who are in the political middle. Um, you don't owe a damn thing to that political party. In particular, you do not owe anything to a party that is out of touch and is hell-bent on taking our country backward. And just watch what happens, right, when the crowd started to veer into a lock him up chant. Democratic leaders bring it back to our democratic duty to win at the ballot box. That's the difference because we all remember how Trump handled lock her up chants when it was directed at Hillary. And let's be very clear. The statistics and the facts are clear about this. Violent crime was up under Donald Trump. And we don't even have to count his crimes in that to make it up, so still. Look, those, better yet, beat the hell out of him at the ballot box. Beat the hell out of him at the ballot box. Harris Wall's ticket exude hope and enthusiasm. It's why the Trump campaign are just upping their attacks because they have no plan B. Their one move is to tear down the opponent, which as a great leader once said, it's easier to do that than to build. And before I introduce him, I just want to say when he was the doctor at the White House, they asked him, who's healthier? Who's a better physical specimen? Is it Trump? Or is it Obama? And he said, it's not even close. It's Donald Trump, not even close. I mean, the truth of the matter is actually Trump hasn't gotten a lot. He's torn some stuff down. There's no law that he's passed that is transformative in this country. He, t he passed a tax cut to give away some more money to, to rich folks, which Republicans have been doing that for years. But you, you, you can't name a piece of legislation that he's done that has actually changed the country, even for his own constituencies. So it's always easier to tear down than build up. Trump has nothing to build on his own campaign, whereas the Harris campaign, they're building on the future and it's gaining momentum. Balance, and then the outcome will be fair. And isn't that what we're talking about in this here election? Yes. 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 
We're saying we just want fairness. We yeah. want dignity for all people. Yeah, yeah. We want to recognize the right all people have to freedom and liberty, to make choices, especially those that are about heart and home, and yeah. not have their government telling them what to do. Yeah. Our campaign is about saying we trust the people. That's right. Yeah. We see the people. We know the people. You know one of the things I love about our country? We are a nation of people who believe in those ideals that were foundational to what made us so special as a nation. We believe in those ideals. And the sisters and brothers of labor have always fought for those ideals. Always fought for those ideals. And we know... We are a work in progress. We haven't yet quite reached all of those ideals, but we will die trying because we love our country and we believe in who we are. Real quick, Meta just changed their algorithm to suppress political content. Please follow our Instagram at Midas Touch right now as we head towards 400,000 followers so you don't miss a beat.